Hello, you're watching Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and we're with Sculpt January 2019 and today's topic was damaged. I chose to sculpt a damaged portal as you can see on the screen now. So it's damaged but it's still working. So step through the portal. You won't be disappointed. See what's on the other side. Who knows? Anyway, uh, so I did a slightly different approach to this. I haven't done any sort of landscape or sort of objects as such. I've done a few, I think. I'm trying to think back now. Uh, but most of my stuff is organic uh, and sculpting generally lends itself to organic things. But you can do uh, sort of worn and uh, damaged things fairly well with sculpting. In fact, it's very good at that, especially if you use brushes. I had lots of problems. Uh, yeah, I say today, it's yesterday, uh, where I was doing the second half of yesterday. Uh, and I'm up early in the morning to do the recording. Uh, and there were loads and loads of problems. Uh, and it was mainly, the biggest problem was the Boolean operation. So uh, setting up my object here, but there's my portal, you can see. And uh, it was all going nicely, but I didn't check the Booleans. Always check that your Booleans have worked. And for some reason, there were faces on the inside. I got at least two hours into the sculpt and uh, then realized there was all these faces on the inside. Now you can fix those sometimes if there's only a few. And uh, I think it's uh, Zacharias Reinhardt who talks about how to fix problems. You can look up on his channel how to fix sculpting problems. Um, but uh, th those, those techniques just don't always work, unfortunately. Um, and I was trying to research because I'm sure I'd seen a few others as well, a few other videos, but I couldn't find them of how you can fix sculpting problems. The main issue I had was these internal faces. And you can, uh, if you haven't gone too far, you can go into wireframe mode and use the selection methods. And one selection is non-manifold. So if you're on vertices and edges, you can choose non-manifold. And I think with faces, it's something slightly different, like loose uh, parts or something like that. Um, so you can try those different selection methods and uh, then you can delete those meshes. Or if you haven't gone too far again, you can go in and uh, delete, just delete the faces. A good way to do that is to decimate your entire mesh to quite a low poly, um, and then go in and try and remove those faces manually. But uh, I'd gone quite far, and I thought actually it's just easier to restart um, without doing all these different things. I must have spent about an hour trying to fix it. And that was a bit pointless really, because it just wasn't uh, necessary and it wasn't helping. Uh, so uh, sometimes you just have to know when to uh, give up on that and restart. But if you've gone a long way through a mesh, then that's really difficult. The other technique is to just sort of Boolean over the top of that mesh. Sometimes if you've got sort of a few inside faces, or if you've got holes especially, then get a little object, put it over the top, Boolean that in, and then sort of smooth it out and smooth it in. I tried that, but it wasn't getting rid of it. I think there's quite a lot of issues with 2.8 and the Boolean operation. And I will definitely, if I'm doing any sort of Boolean things, go into 2.7 first, uh, because there's a lot of nice plugins there. Uh, I did use JNM's Fast Carve, um, and it, it, it still seems to be struggling a bit in 2.8. It, it, it is quick, uh, it's very easy to use, but um, I prefer the ball tools in 2.79. And it might just be 2.79 that's a bit more stable in order to do that sort of thing. So I'd uh, put a fair bit of detail in and uh, then sort of de did a remesh and started um, sculpting. Um, and I was, I was relatively pleased. I appended a few brushes as well. I thought this one might be nice with uh, the orb brushes. Uh, someone's on uh, Blend Swap. Uh, you can go onto Blend Swap and look up orb brushes and you'll find his set. I think sometimes you have to rename the file if you want to extract it for some reason. Some people had a lot of problems with that, uh, but it's, it's not difficult to do that. Just rename the file with the right extension or something along those lines. Uh, I think I've got a, yes, I have got a video on that and you can uh, just check that video out and uh, look at the comments as well. People in the comments have written how they've got around that problem if it doesn't unzip for you. So you can see I'm uh, moving along with this sculpt. Oh, the other problem I had was the dreaded undo button. Oh, there's a crash there. The dreaded undo button uh, glitch in Blender 2.8. That's that's a real problem. And I, I'm not sure whether the next sculpt I should be doing it in 2.8 because uh, after having that big, huge crash and uh, losing about uh, two hours, taking about three hours worth of work, uh, then I had the undo problem again, uh, where if you 
undo because it's it's slightly laggy undoing things uh, and then you might press undo a couple of times and then blender will just go back to the beginning of that sculpt uh, there so when you went into sculpt mode blender will go all the way back to the beginning of that and that is a bit of a killer as well so after all this crashing i, I thought right i'm restarting uh, go back into it have another go uh, and then that happened as well and i was oh no what a killer i was not smiling like this i tell you <laughs> so after and uh, i feel bad for my dog because he was he was trying to comfort me uh, and he could tell i was upset um, and i shouted at him to go away um, sorry sorry frank uh, uh, that was naughty um, i was naughty not the dog <laughs> naughty <laughs> so um, yeah there was a few choice words and uh, did shout at the dog to go away uh, but I'm still happy and still enjoying myself. I, I am really enjoying this, uh, but that was a killer. That really was upsetting. <laughs> anyway, so watch out for 2.8. I don't think it is uh, stable enough for production in any way, if you are sculpting. Uh, I, saving regularly is an obvious one, but you just get in the flow and it's quite difficult to remember that. And actually, when you uh, start panicking a bit uh, and you're rushing, then you start forgetting to save. Uh, so that's when I was forgetting to save again. Uh, and it was very annoying. So uh, yeah, remember to save lots and uh, don't use 2.8 for productions, I think is the, the big lesson learned here. Um, I don't know quite what I'm gonna do. I really love 2.8, absolutely loving EV. Um, I do like many aspects of the sculpting uh, mode. There are some weird glitches in it. Um, if you put the brush curve all the way up to, um, so the curve is sort of all the way along with a steep edge, so it um, has uh, very hard edges sort of thing. Um, that's quite glitchy uh, in 2.8 and not so much in 2.7. This is where I started panicking and thinking, oh dear, I've got loads of inside faces. And uh, you can, I th thought I'd leave it in how I'm going about trying to solve it. So you can see me putting shapes in, trying to boolean those glitches out, and that usually works quite well, but uh, they were just causing more faces. And in some ways I thought, actually that's better because they're smaller faces, so I can get rid of them. But then it was overlapping other faces and I couldn't tell where they were. So I was trying lots of uh, different methods uh, for getting rid of them. Uh, I was trying to select faces on the inside and then go onto the outside and deselect the faces that I'd selected uh, as well on the inside. Uh, so you can sort of see that here. So I go on, on the outside, on the inside, select loads of faces, and then on the outside and deselect faces because it can't see the inside faces, and then press delete. But it, it was, I know that that was not a good approach because there, it's probably gonna miss a few. And it only takes one or two to really screw up your whole sculpt. And then I thought, well, occasionally you can bring down the resolution uh, and uh, fix it that way. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll try that um, with, um, not uh, bring down the resolution in terms of the sculpting brush and uh, not decimate or anything like that and then paint over it and sometimes that gets uh, sort of joins it back together and gets rid of holes and things um, so that uh, that's a possibility as well but it wasn't working particularly well I, I ended up with lots of holes in my mesh I did try exporting it out uh, and bring it back in to see if that would work in any way and then that's when I gave up and just thought I'm gonna restart and uh, try again and uh, so the actual finished piece is probably about an hour and a half uh, of sculpting and modeling and things. Uh, maybe a tiny bit longer with a bit of pratting around in Eevee, which I love to do these days. And uh, so it, uh, it kind of shows you what you can do with sculpting brushes. Um, <laughs> another crash there. It's just crash after crash, it seems. Oh no, actually, no, that's this time I went back into 2.79 to do all the Boolean operations and then back again. Weirdly, in 2.79, I was having issues again. So um, you just watch out for Booleans. Uh, they're, they're not the best way of modeling. They're great for sculpting because they quickly make a mesh uh, that's uh, got the shape you want and then you can sculpt on it. But in terms of topology, it's all over the place and uh, dreadfully bad. So um, just double check all your sculpts and things like that. Uh, all your booleans. <laughs> uh, you can tell I'm a bit sort of frazzled now. Uh, it was a long day yesterday, um, but it got through it in the end. And uh, now we're on to the next day, which is um, 
I can't even remember what the next one is. Uh, anyway, so to get rid of little holes, that's not too bad because uh, you can go into edit mode if you haven't gone too far. This is the problem again, if you've got a very detailed mesh and you go into edit mode, it's extremely laggy and it will probably crash uh, depending on your machine. Uh, so uh, if you've got lots of holes, you can go into edit mode if you haven't gone too far and uh, then uh, select um, the edge, one edge that's on in the hole um, and then go down to select similar. <clears throat> and uh, you can select all the uh, non-manifold edges, I think they are, and that will give you all the um, edges that have holes, and then you can just press F to fill, uh, and that should sort it out. So there's lots of um, solutions to problems there, but uh, none of them were working, and that is that is the problem with this sort of sculpting workflow. If you get problems, they are very hard to fix, and uh, a big frustration. So here I am again trying to um, redo the sculpt and I'm really rushing now so it wasn't as good the second time through <coughs> and uh, you can see yeah just uh, very quickly going over using that I like that um, this sort of flatten edge uh, orb Z brush not Z brush um, orb brush um, tool they've got um, or it's, it's been created uh, it's I mean you can create that manually um, but it's uh, just awkward to get there uh, by yourself and I never get it quite as nice as the one this person has created. It's quite a nice brush that. Uh, so um, well worth, um, uh, you can append those brushes in nice and easily, well worth doing. And I like, uh, because it's quite a low poly mesh and I'm trying to do hard edges, I'm using this sort of cut in brush which is used for cracks and things. But I use that, oh there was another crash, that was the dreaded undo error and I was, uh, that's what I was telling the dog to go away. <laughs> That was the dreaded undo error, so I'm redoing the things. And it's getting even worse because uh, I'm rushing even more now uh, to try and get it done and thinking, right, I'm just gonna do it really simply and then do loads of damage, <laughs> which is the whole point of the exercise. But anyway, that flatten edge and the crease brush, which I'm doing now, uh, is quite nice uh, for just creasing your edges as well as doing cracks and things as, uh, as well. As well as doing cracks and things as well. Um, yeah. So uh, all the bricks, uh, they're a bit wobbly now. I just thought, get it done. Uh, and actually I thought to myself this is supposed to be a damaged ruin so hopefully I can get away with quite a, a rubbishy base but I would have liked to have gone to a bit more effort with the base especially that face there um, I was just doing some shapes and I thought that looks quite naff uh, it should put a bit more effort into the details like that because they just it just wasn't great that sort of square bit there and that sort of drawn line that just looked very amateurish um, and then at these uh, uh, cloaked figures um, would have been quite fun I think to sculpt and get a bit more um, hard edges on but I just left them a bit blobby and thought I'd damage them a fair bit but they were the weakest area uh, and they could have been the strongest area uh, if I'd had a bit more time I think uh, because that would, uh, that I was looking forward to doing some cloaked figures that would be quite fun uh, so now I'm doing the damage I've turned off symmetry now now that's always a tricky one isn't it when do you turn off symmetry no I've, st <laughs> I've still got symmetry on looking at that uh, so I uh, turned off symmetry now uh, to do the damage on the inside so um, it's a bit too symmetrical still I would have liked to have gone back and done a bit more more damage uh, but I'd already gone into the sort of detailed aspect and the multi-resolution by the time I'd realized that and that's um, again I tried the same sort of approach with um, trying some slash uh, marks there which don't work on a ruin that's uh, kind of impossible uh, unless a big huge giant tried to chop it up with a sword uh, but anyway um, I tried doing the multi-resolution modifier uh, shrink wrap uh, hack type thing uh, which I was talking about last session so I've recorded the instant mesh so I'm um, retopologizing an instant mesh bringing it back in and then shrink wrapping to the high poly now I have noticed um, I have noticed there's some glitches with this um, it doesn't um, it, it works it works quite well so you um, subdivide your multi-resolution modifier um, and then you shrink wrap it to the old one and that's pretty good but when you go to your multi-resolution modifier, you have to smooth it out a fair bit. Um, it just um, seems to uh, cause tiny little glitches all over the place. Uh, so you can see me going over the mesh now and smoothing it out. So you lose a fair bit of detail. So you do have to be careful how far along you are with your detail level, um, which isn't so bad, but maybe things like the bricks, um, lost 
their detail in these in their sort of crevices um, I probably should have done them a bit deeper anyway so now you can see I'm onto the brushes uh, and this is quite fun really uh, saving my work regularly now I think I think I did get caught by the undo uh, undo glitch again in a bit <laughs> but um, it wasn't too far through this time uh, yes in fact it was just after this I, it happened again and then I thought right saving regularly be disciplined uh, but when you start panicking and rushing that's when you forget those sort of things so using lots of different rock brushes basically uh, different types and using control with the anchor uh, brush setting I've got tutorials on all these different things uh, so they are all in the description now hopefully they're all in the description anyway uh, if you can't find one then uh, give me a shout in the comments below and um, I will try and put it in or I'll uh, point you to where it might be on my channel uh, give you a, a keyword to search on my channel uh, most of the time it's, it's uh, just search with a key term and it'll be there anyway uh, moving on to back to this yes I think yeah uh, there was a, an undo glitch there again so I'm just going over with lots of rock brushes uh, lots of different types and thinking about where I put them as well I'm not just scattering them anywhere I'm putting them on the edges where it's likely that you're going to get damage so all the edge parts I'm going over uh, still with the anchor brush and just sort of scraping with the anchor brush uh, so get because the anchor brush you can rotate your texture as well and you can um, resize it obviously uh, just by clicking and dragging uh, and using uh, different strengths as well so there were some nice brushes just for undulations in my stones uh, but there was also some nice brushes for um, getting that real um, damaged uh, broken look uh, so like that one for example gives a real um, harsh damage whereas other ones were much softer and they were good for undulations in the stones so I'm just sort of rushing over the shape now uh, getting these sort of damaged bits uh, I'm, and this was the point where I thought actually it's a bit too symmetrical and I could have done with a bit more um, damage on the edges but when you're in the multi-resolution modifier um, there's only so much you can do to your uh, mesh. I could have done the whole uh, remesh and then uh, shrink wrap thing again, I suppose. Uh, but um, I, it, was, it, I, it was, I was rushing. <laughs> That's becoming my phrase, I know. Uh, I thought I'd do a fun portal. Uh, that was really straightforward to do in Eevee. Um, it was a bit strange. I'm still a bit confused by translucent and transparent and uh, getting transparent textures in Eevee. Uh, maybe I've forgotten something and I was sort of like I say rushing a bit uh, so but I, I thought it was just a case of going into uh, screen based reflections and refractions and things and ticking everything and um, also going into the uh, material settings and making sure it's an alpha blend I think it is so it's a bit frustrating you have to tick things in two places but that's often the problem if something's not working in Eevee you, you haven't ticked it in both places um, but I couldn't get the transparent to work uh, you couldn't see through my portal so I just thought oh, okay I'll t just set two emissions and then I animated the um, Veranoi and the uh, noise no, the wave texture so I animated those with um, a mapping node and just a bit of the scale and things as well that was quite fun and um, I thought um, I should do a lighting probe so I could light from the objects I wasn't sure whether that's how you do it and then I thought actually I haven't got enough time to look this up so I'm just going to do a sort of disc um, uh, area lamp and then when that was on I thought actually I, I can get rid of one of my area lamps as well and then I ended up with this it was it looks kind of nice uh, especially with Eevee magic <laughs> And um, uh, th we've got all sorts going on again, even volumetrics this time. Uh, animated volumetrics as well. I, I animated the Veronoi texture in the volumetrics. So that was good fun. Anyway, back to the Discord server. Well done to everybody who's uh, joined in there. Some great hands, better than mine, I think. Uh, people doing more detail in their hands. Nice work from Manahu and Mr. T. I keep wanting to say Mr. T, but it's not Mr. T, Mr. M. Anyway, whoever that was, well done. Uh, do put your names on your posts, uh, then I can see them when they pop up. Uh, but at the moment, it's too small on my screen uh, to see who's done what. Uh, someone testing the multi-res uh, modifier thing there. Uh, Lirum, there we go. I can mention you because your name's on your post. That's my favourite thing. Thinking of a hand puppet, what a great idea. A hand puppet with the hand poses. So, well done. 
thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for all your support. I don't say that enough. And thanks for all the tips and tricks that people are uh, giving me all the time. It's really helping me to uh, keep going. Uh, and do get across the Discord server. I'm trying to check as much as I can, but um, I'm really only responding to people that are messaging me directly uh, with the at Grant, at Grant um, tag, uh, because I'm struggling for time, especially yesterday. It was tough. Anyway, uh, thanks for sticking with me, and thanks for all the comments saying I'm still here. That's uh, appreciated. It's nice to know. And I'll see you next time.